In my video on how Scriabin broke music theory, I said that the mystic chord first appeared in Sonata 5 and that it didn't come from the acoustic set. Well, I'm taking all that back since a clever viewer commented, there is no mystery to the mystic chord. It decidedly evolved as a dominant 13 sharp 11 chord as he uses it directly as such in middle ear works. And then he cites a middle ear Scriabin work that uses a mystic chord. Since reading that comment, I've scoured through Scriabin's entire middle era looking for mystic chords, and I found five examples to share with you all. I'll also discuss how they're being applied so that we can get an idea of how he went from using the mystic chord as an infrequent spice in his middle era to making it the main course meal of his late era. I'm Jay Beard, and I make videos about Scriabin and music theory, so check out my website to see the lessons and courses that I offer, and please like, comment, and subscribe. So what I learned from analyzing Scriabin's middle era is that the mystic chord is derived from the acoustic scale, and Scriabin uses the acoustic scale as a dominant. So in a sense we can think of the mystic chord originating as a dominant 5 chord with extensions. We can see this as early as his very first middle era piece, Sonata 4. Sonata 4 is in F sharp major, and in measures 6 and 7 we basically get a 2-5-1 progression. On one hand, we can say that the 2 and 5 chords have non-chord tones that resolve, making them regular 7th chords, but if we don't omit any pitches in our analysis, we see that both measures use the acoustic scale, aka Lydian dominant. Technically, the mystic chord is buried within there, but this shows that the acoustic scale is applied as a dominant with extensions 7, 9, sharp 11, 13. The first true use of the mystic chord, as far as I can tell, comes from opus 32, number 1. To be clear, my criteria for defining use of the mystic chord is that six pitches are sounding together that fit into set 634, which I explain in more detail on my video on Scriabin's mystic chord. Opus 32 is also in F sharp, and it starts off on a dominant 5 chord C sharp acoustic set. Then we do a flat 2 5 1 cadence, which Scriabin does a bunch in his early era, but unlike his early era, this flat 2 chord is the mystic set, the slightly less common fifth mode we call G7 sharp 9 sharp 11 flat 13. For me, the use of this chord has a beautiful, mysterious impact on the ear, as the mystic chord lacks the grounding fifth scale degree of the acoustic set. Let me know if you want me to do a whole analysis video on opus 32 number 1. Next we have the example the commenter mentioned, opus 37 number 3. This one's a really straightforward 2-5-1 progression. Starting on the 4 chord, minor 4, 1 chord, now a 2 chord mystic chord, regular mode. Now a 5 chord acoustic set, resolving to 1. So in those examples he took traditional cadences like 2-5-1 and flat 2-5-1 and used mystic chord extensions to add flavor to the progression. That's how the mystic chord originated. In the next examples he uses the mystic chord a little more freely, more like he'd use it in his late era, yet they tend to eventually resolve to tonic triads eventually. So in opus 49 number 3 we have lots of sequences using extension chords. In measure 8 we're resolved on a G major triad, and then we move down a major third to E flat 9 13, then down a tritone to A acoustic, then up a major third to D flat mystic using an uncommon mode 634 B fifth mode. Again, it's fair to interpret many of these pitches as non-chord tones that resolve, but technically the mystic chord is there, and it's interesting how he's transposing it by major thirds and tritones like I discuss in my video on the mystic chord and my Composing Like Scriabin course. The next example, opus 52 number 2, Enigma, is almost as atonal as his late era. You can tell he's moving in that direction. We start out with five notes of the major scale and then we get a major third, 
and then we quietly get the fifth mode of the mystic chord using a two note figure. In this example, Scriabin's using the mystic chord not as a dominant and without any real tonal context. It's used isolated on its own, creating an enigmatic effect. It's worth mentioning that the piece ends with an entire whole tone scale, which suggests this piece is more atonal than a piece that resolves to a particular tonic triad. The last example is opus 57 number 1, Desire. He uses lots of big middle era extension voicings in this piece, and the very last chord is a mystic chord with the uncommon 634B first mode. This shows that Scriabin is aware of different modes of the mystic set and even the inversion pair which is used in this final chord. Using it as the ending chord suggests he's considering using it as a tonic, and in his very next opus, his late era begins using the mystic chord as a consonance to start and end on. Neil from the Discord server made a good point that it wasn't particularly innovative for Scriabin to use the mystic chord as a dominant extension chord, as many composers before him had explored extension chords in a tonal context. What's really groundbreaking is how Scriabin uses the mystic chord as a consonance that doesn't need to be resolved, and that's what occurs for the first time in his fifth sonata. In this video we see that Scriabin starts using the acoustic set at the very start of his middle era, then he removes a pitch using the mystic chord as a dominant, and then as his middle era goes on the mystic chord is used less and less functionally as a dominant, and more and more as an isolated consonance. Here's a list of some other middle era pieces I didn't get to mention where Scriabin uses the acoustic set. Scriabin was on the forefront of pioneering harmony outside the major scale which would dominate the next century of classical music. It's beautiful to see Scriabin's development from a largely traditional composer in his early era, to discovering the mystic chord as a dominant in his middle era, to finally using the mystic chord as a consonance in his late era. I focus a lot on how to apply Scriabin's late era harmony as a consonance in my Composing Like Scriabin course, so consider checking that out, and I know if you made it this far in the video that you appreciate learning about these insights about Scriabin, so do me a favor and like, comment, and subscribe, and join the community full of math nerds and killer pianists on the Discord link below. I appreciate that viewer's comment that led to all this inquiry and insight, so I always encourage you all to disagree with me in the comments to help me learn more about Scriabin. Cheers.